Hi, I'm Dave Miller. I'm the Director of College Counseling at Stevenson School in Pebble Beach, California, and I'd like to welcome you today to the second year uh, and the second series of a program we call College Prep for You. We began this last year as a way to uh, reach out to the students in the high schools and the junior highs in the Monterey County area, probably about 25 to 30 schools, uh, to, shed, to, the, to spread the word and shed a little bit of light on this uh, difficult, perplexing process of college admissions. Uh, we did about 12 shows last year, and we've got 16 uh, shows um, on the slate for this year. Uh, this is a live show, and it'll be shown a few, few more times between now and uh, two weeks. We'll do two every month. There'll be probably 16 throughout the year. Uh, some the same as last year, some a little bit different. Um, what we'd like to do today is review a little bit of what we did last year, preview uh, this year's programs. Uh, we're going to do a little bit better of job of introducing ourselves, and I also have a guest I want to share with you today. And then we're going to start focusing on uh, the nitty gritty. We're going to talk about where our seniors should be right now, exactly what they should be doing in the process at present, and then we're also going to give some application tips for when they actually get started with the uh, applications uh, themselves. <clears throat> so to get started, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. Um, I've been in education for about 40 years. So that's gone pretty quickly, and it sounds awful to say 40 years, but I've sort of had fun and I've uh, enjoyed what I've done. But I've always been in touch with college counseling and helping kids to, uh, to go to school. I came from a middle class background, really didn't have much college counseling. And in fact, my football coach helped me and only applied to three places and made some choices. It was pretty easy then. Uh, a little more difficult these days with uh, testing and all the pressure and so forth. Uh, so I've always had sort of a special interest uh, in doing this. Uh, I've been a public school teacher for about 23 years. I was at Seaside High School and tried to get kids involved with uh, both the UCs and the Cal States and also some private schools uh, around the country. And I had a lot of wife, uh, help from my wife who was at Seaside up until this past year. Uh, so we had that experience on the public school side. In the last 12 years, I've been at Stevenson School, and it's been a totally different world uh, in a private school. And in fact, uh, it's probably only through the largesse of Stevenson that we're allowed to do and, and permitted to do this, uh, this program. Uh, on the private school side, it's a huge thing. It's a big thing. Lots of pressure, a lot of parent involvement, lots of things to know. And so I wanted to share um, some of that with you with, with the perspective of being on the public school side. Um, so that's a little bit what, about me. Um, in terms of what we did last year, um, we did a little bit of everything. We talked about money, we talked about financial aid and merit aid, we talked about athletic recruiting, we talked about the role of parents and coaches and teachers, talked a little bit about the application process itself. How do you decide? How do you choose? How do you fill out the applications? Uh, what if I don't get in? What are some alter alternatives? Uh, all those sorts of things. We had uh, parents here, we had individual students, we had a couple of students, we'd bring in athletes, we had a panel, we had athletic directors, we had a variety of people from the college side. Okay, just to preview a little bit about um, what we're doing this year, and I will go to my, uh, my PowerPoint here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk in this first show about application tips and uh, what you should be doing right now. A lot of real specific things that may not make sense to some students if you're not in the process, especially if you're a sophomore or junior, but if you're right in the midst of it as a senior, as Julia can point out to you, it's going to make a lot of sense to you. Uh, that in two weeks, we're going to talk about the UC system and the Cal State system, our public schools, a little different process from the private schools. Uh, in three weeks from now, we're going to hope to have um, uh, some information about our uh, college tour and that we've just taken and visiting colleges. Uh, after that, we'll deal with uh, financial aid, merit aid, all the ins and outs of the money uh, uh, crunch and the money process. And that's particularly poignant these days with uh, the current state of affairs with our economy and the stock market. Because uh, everybody's concerned about that, no matter how much money you make or how much money you need. Um, I think it gets pretty expensive when you get to that $200,000, $250,000 range where some of these private schools are today. Um, and all of these, all of these sessions are in, in line with what students, you know, are actually doing at the time. So we come around Christmas, early December, we'll do a show on getting good recommendations, which is a little late for that, but we're going to focus on the interview, because that's when uh, kids tend to do their interviews with certain schools right before the Christmas break. Uh, after the new year, we'll talk about standardized testing, and this gets into the junior year, uh, because the seniors will be pretty much done uh, by January 1st, at least they should be. 
So we'll talk about all aspects of standardized testing, the SAT 1s and 2s, the ACT, uh, the TOEFL exams, um, all sorts of specific uh, elements related to testing. What is it, how is it, when does it occur, uh, what does it cost, what's it going to do for me, what if I don't test well, all those sorts of things. In fact, uh, you probably should be aware of tomorrow's a national test day for the PSAT. All of our sophomores and juniors are going to be taking that, and uh, that's to get them ready to take uh, the other more important standardized test. <clears throat> uh, next, we'll talk about thinking about college. This is a more philosophical thing where you, you really probe your mind and, and kick around a family conversation about the reasons you should be going to college, and, and uh, you sort of stretch those parameters and have a good conversation there. And then we'll talk more specifically about uh, choosing colleges. How do you go about that? How do you learn about schools? Uh, what is the difference? You know, we're, we're presuming that the students and the families are a blank slate, and uh, we're going to draw on it in. in um, fill in the colors and all the details and help you decide uh, that important process of picking schools. Uh, later through uh, the spring, we'll talk about the application process itself. Even though people are going through it now, the juniors need to become familiar with that process in their English classes or their history classes, however each school does it. And we'll talk about the nitty gritty of, of uh, uh, working your way through an actual application itself. We'll talk a little bit about that today. About April 1st is when students find out about where they've been admitted, so we'll have a show devoted to um, admissions uh, decisions, how they're made, um, the, the stuff we know on our side, and then we'll spend another session on uh, looking at this from the other side of the desk. What do the uh, admissions officers really think? How do they make their decisions? And certainly it's different uh, in a UC system than it is in a small liberal arts school, and certainly it's different at, at one of the military academies and so forth. So we're going to give you some perspective from both sides of the desk so you can understand the process so that you'll be able to prepare for it. Um, about April 1st then, everybody will probably know where they've been accepted, where they've been de denied, and those few, few, few kids who are on what's called the wait list. And so we'll deal with each of those eventualities, and that will lead us to a discussion of what's called the gap year. Some students aren't ready right, to go right into college. They'll take a year off and do some things, so there'll be lots of alternatives, uh, both in states, um, schools here in the states, uh, schools in Canada. Uh, Australia, schools overseas, and then just not going to school uh, altogether. So we'll have some viable options and alternatives there. Uh, later after that, uh, towards the end of April, we'll have a panel of parents and some students here who will, uh, you'll be able to profit from their sage advice and their perspective, looking back on this process, having gone through it, uh, sometimes with more than one child. Uh, if I knew then what I know now, real hard nitty gritty information about the mistakes I made and how you can profit from those. Um, we have just done at our school uh, the second, for the second time the personal statement, the essay, because kids are writing that right now. In fact, we'll talk to Julia in a second about her essay. But I also do that late in the spring because that's when juniors need to be starting uh, to think about and formulating uh, a personal statement or an essay. And they need to spend a lot of time with it. They're going to have to write several essays. It becomes a really big thing. It's one of the things that you really can control in this entire process. Um, and we'll wrap up the year with uh, another timely event, athletics and recruiting. People think that it happens during the fall because they think about football, but there are more athletics and there are more athletes and more recruiting than just football. And it goes on, goes on year round and it's different levels of division one, two, and three, and it's certainly different for men and women. So we'll talk about that whole process of working athletics into your admissions process, learning about recruiting. Uh, we'll have an athletic director, we'll have some coaches, we'll have some recruiters here, and we'll have some people who've gone through that process. And then finally, at the end of May, we'll finish the year with letting go, that'll be the parents letting go and the students breaking away. And th both those things have to occur. And we'll give some uh, good sage advice, um, the nuts and bolts, the A, Bs, and Cs, about getting prepared through the summer, a little some changes, some psychological differences to help parents understand their kids and also for some of the students to understand, understand themselves. And then uh, some details about what you should pack, what you should bring, uh, how, what, what sort of shots you have to take, what all you do to get ready for uh, that big move in August and September. Um, okay, for right, right now, before we start uh, the actual um, instruction and, and conversation today, I wanted to introduce to you a guest of mine, Julia Ramirez. She's a, a junior at Stevenson, one of my favorite students, and I've spent a long time with her uh, and supported her, and she sort of supported me. So, uh, and she's the real expert here today, and I'm just going to prompt some things. So, Julia, what can you, you tell you. us about yourself? Yeah, I'm a senior. Um, I'm from Chicago, Illinois. I'm a boarding student, of course, and I found out about Stevenson through a scholarship, so I actually was ahead of the game through the whole scholarship program. And I've been here for years, and I'm looking uh, to head back northeast. 
Good. for some colleges. So you've got some, some schools back there. That's right. Now, it's a pretty big risk, pretty big jump coming here. What, what made you take that leap? Yeah, uh, it was it was through a process of I, I was planning on going to school back in Chicago, mm -hmm. but what happened was is they thought I was ready, so to speak. Who's, um, the, who's they now? Is the people through my scholarship, Daniel Murphy Foundation, mm -hmm. and so there's a ton of counselors. Uh, I went through um, a lot of writing. I did essays, um, interviews mm -hmm. with a lot of people. So they got they kind of got a feel of what I was about and they thought I would be able to go through an experience such as boarding school. So, so, so in a way, you've gone through the selection process already just of, to yeah, get into high school. Exactly. So Does that give you an advantage? Experience. Does that give you I, an advantage I hope now? so. I hope that's uh, the kind of thing that I've received is more opportunities and more experience to this type of process. Okay, why you know? How did they pick you? Well, what happened was is because of my grades in, um, in school and also um, my financial um, assistance that mm -hmm. I needed. Um, while I was in grammar school, I, would, I did uh, attend a Catholic school, but you know my parents worked extra hard, and so they wouldn't be able to afford me to go to a good um, Catholic school for high school. So that's why I applied for this scholarship. Okay, that's neat. You're glad you did? I'm, I'm very happy that I did. Yeah, yeah. I've been here for mm -hmm. years, and I mean, I think it's one of the, I, I couldn't even imagine going back to school in Chicago because I love it so much. Okay, good. Well, fill in the background about your four years, a little bit about your academics, a little bit about your um, personal social life, uh, what you've done outside of the classroom. Well, I was uh, um, president um, back in grammar school for our little student council program that we had. So right off the bat, I, I don't know if you remember Jeremy Sandler, but he was a senior. He was student body president. So I remember approaching him and asking him. He's at Vanderbilt him, right now. Yeah. Oh, Vanderbilt. That's yeah. right. And, and I, he's becoming a teacher. Is he? Mm -hmm. He. That's why I went up to him so easily and I asked him, I said, can you give me some tips about how I can win the election for my freshman class? And so there was about six people who were running that year, and I lost. So it was it was really hard because it was in back in grammar school. I've always felt like I was on top of the class, and I came here at Stevenson. It was a lot more competitive. Um, it was I had to put a lot more hard work into it. So then sophomore and junior year, I became class president. So I didn't give up, and I went through the same process and um, achieved what I wanted. So I've always been in the student council aspect. Uh, I've a, I've played six sports at Stevenson, mm -hmm. so even though they're JV, I've always tried it out no matter what. And so. and you've been a leader, and you've been one of the real pivotal people on our campus. But life isn't always peaches and cream. That's right. No, it's you've gotten not. socked in the face a couple of times. Yeah, that, exactly. It doesn't come easy, but I think that's what's given me the strength. I think through even through this college process that I know that I'm not going to get everything that I want, and it's not going to come easy. But I'm going to try my best. Yeah, and and, and you ran going. for you've been always the class president. And then you yeah. ran for the school president last I, year. Student body president, and, and I lost. Yeah. But what I did was I applied for head tour guide, and I received that, and I, uh, I applied for head prefect um, on campus, and Big I received positions. that one too. So. So what does this illustrate uh, for the people watching out there today? And, and I don't mean to be condescending and, and to put you on the spot, but right. you know I sort of relate to Julia because I came from a sort of a you know middle class background, and my parents didn't go to school, and I felt like I was sort of taking a risk where, where I went to college. But I think it's that characteristic that that Julia certainly illustrates, and I feel like I did at some point where you have to take that leap, you have to take a risk, you have to put yourself out there. That's right. And you can do it. The glass is always half full. You can get to where you want to do, where you want to get to, where, whatever college, whatever job, wherever you want to be, you can get there, and it might be circuitous. Yeah, it might be route. harder, right? You might have to take more loops, but, but you, can get there. you can get there. So never say never. say never. never. Exactly. Right? Um, how about uh, some other things about this whole process? How about standardized tests? Standardized test. Well, I didn't take I, very. Um, a lot of people from our school actually take the course, the prep course, and mm -hmm. I can't revolution. There's is a that, variety of ones. Yeah, you can take. revolution um, is the popular one on campus. And did you take one? And I didn't. Yeah. I didn't um, mostly because of just paying for it and just a lot of the time that I, I was doing other things around school that I wasn't able to dedicate because I do have school work mm -hmm. other than just leadership yeah, positions. Yeah, an interesting way to look at it is you so, can either do or you can prepare to do. To, to, exactly. And in, in yeah. our day, nobody took all these fancy tests, but now you pretty much have to or, yeah. or suffer some consequences. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I mean, we took the PSAT. I took it mm -hmm. sophomore year and junior year, and I knew I wasn't a good test taker, yeah. but I've taken the SAT twice, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to take the ACT twice. I'm going to take it 
it again um, upcoming. So. Yeah, and we'll get to that later in the year when we talk yeah. about those tests. But what I found recently is our students are doing really, really well on the ACT. Mm -hmm. Any number of your peers, these seniors, come in with much improved scores with the ACT compared to the SAT. Yeah, and we talk about it at lunch, definitely. Yeah, and yeah. or if you know you're not a good test taker, you don't want to spend all that time, you want to spend time with leadership and school and fun and sports, exactly. then you dis discount the testing and you find a school that doesn't put a place a premium on the test. And we've definitely looked at a, a list yeah. full of schools that don't look at standardized tests. Exactly. So. Okay, you're in the middle of the process right now. Yeah. What's it like? Well, first thing, best advice is, de is get organized because, I mean, I usually try to take 10 minutes off of my day and just start writing things down because it's always going to be in the back of your mind. But once you have a set, um, I, I recommend a folder, kind of sort things out. Sort yeah. of like, like this one? Sort of like that one. Yeah, show them. Yeah. Definitely. In fact, we, we even provide you the little uh, labels here. Label. You can see these things. And <laughs> yeah, this is my daughter. So I kept it oh, for years. Wow. So you've got something like this? I do. I yeah. do. I have a green one like that one. And then I have a specialized notebook where I take notes um, when, I, when I see representatives that come from different schools. And another thing is just to get to know yourself. I have three, um, three books that I bought that is just like get to know yourself. And I take quizzes and sort of my personality mm -hmm. so I can kind of feel, so I can sort of get a feel of what kind of school fits me best. Okay, and if, if you're not a go-getter and you don't have all this initiative and you're yeah. not Julia Ramirez, um, schools can help you do that. Now, what yeah. have we done to force all of our students to learn about themselves? That's right. We've gone over it. Well, my junior year is um, when we had the to-do list of sort of things like writing down um, your biggest achievements, um, just kind of like your portfolio of the three years that you've been. Yeah, you do a little resume. Yeah, write a resume. Then there's this big long thing called the self-assessment. The self-assessment, yeah. which is super long, but super helpful. It gets yeah. you thinking a lot about, yeah, and you think about the time you've spent. Who yeah. you are, what you value, what you've read, what you're proud of, mm -hmm. all these things that you maybe don't think about until someone forces you to. Definitely. And what two commercial tests do you remember doing with us that are on Naviance? The two commercial, was it, okay, now I'm put on the spot here, yeah. and I took did we take a person? Yeah, the oh, personality the test. The personality test, but we also took a test of how we study yeah, and like the environment. Yeah. I, I can't remember Yeah, the remember learning that. inventory. The learning inventory. Yeah, that was very helpful too. Yeah, and really, now these are things that yeah. we, our school has purchased, you know, for all the families, That's but right. they're also available um, for free on the internet. They're mm -hmm. personality tests. Uh, you've probably heard of the Myers-Briggs test. There are all sorts of learning inventory. But basically, there are a series of two half-hour tests. And you answer a series of questions. And it tells you what kind of learner you are, yes. what kind of person you are. Why is that valuable? Well, I found a value for myself. Well, after when you go through the whole, it, even if it's in a half hour, it's, it goes by quick, by the way. So don't, don't think it's tedious, everyone. But I thought it was because it kind of gives me, do I want a big school, a small school? Um, even It even asks you a lot of things about weather. So where in the country do you want to be in? Yeah, and, um, and it's school. like a Myers-Briggs test. It tells you four specific things, and we can't go into them now, but basically, are you an introvert, an extrovert? Right. Are you outgoing? Are you perceptive? Are you nurturing? Are you feeling? Mm -hmm. What kind? How do you deal with the world? What, what are kind of learner system? you are, yeah. And then the other exactly. one deals with the learning. Yeah. Uh, and as I remember, because I took these tests myself, do you like lots of light, <laughs> right. sound, music? Do you like to be by yourself? Um, you all these more, things yeah. that not just how you are for high school, but they can help you through life in terms of your learning. Exactly. Uh, so the personality test, the learning inventory, all of these things are intended, the self-assessment, self intended for you to find the right match. Okay. Now, have you found some matches? I did. I have, um, I'm really into the Jesuit schools. Mm -hmm. um, and what are those? Such a, the Jesuit schools, they're not Catholic, but um, such as Holy Cross, um, Georgetown, and it's more of, I guess, a moral thing and of kind of like a unity that brings to the school and that I believe. Mm -hmm. Now, so, are you Catholic yourself? I am Catholic. No. Yeah, I am. So. And the Jesuits stand for the teaching order. Right. And, and they happen to be Catholic. And mm -hmm. around here, they're the, the uh, Loyola Marymount, Santa mm -hmm. Clara. Santa Clara. You know, University of San Diego. Uh, Holy Cross is not a Jesuit school, but they're, I think they're, well, they're part of the Holy Cross order, oh, just like Notre yeah. Dame is. Mm -hmm. But they all share what in common? They all share... The spirituality. The spirituality. The, service, the type of person you are. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's that's one of the big factors. So that's why I'm applying to a few of those Jesuit schools. Okay. And you found them uh, yeah. because of the person you are and your own interests and your Catholic and the trips you took with us. The trips, uh, yes. And you went back east with us for eight days. I went to the northeast, yeah. So what did you get out of that? The northeast college tour. Well, we saw, uh, I want to say 20 schools, I think, in eight days. Um, well, what I got out of it, you, you definitely have to personalize it. I made the notes that I thought were more convenient. So say I'm, I'm very interested in, into political science and international affairs. So I asked those type of questions, just mm -hmm. like, 
what kind of professors or student ratios and things like mm -hmm. that. So. so you started separating your lists and getting rid of schools that you, you're that definitely felt, not going to do. Yeah, and when you're on campus, mm -hmm. you sort of get this whole, it, it's a different feeling. It's you, either you feel right or sometimes you don't. Yeah, it's sort Even of a gut The feeling. environment, exactly, yeah, of where thing. you're around. Now, granted, those things cost money. And, yes. you know, people raise money and they write checks and so forth. But everybody can do that to a greater or lesser extent. Get onto a campus, right. part of the family vacation, the summertime. Mm -hmm. Get a feel for a big school, a little school, an engineering school, an art school, liberal arts school, a medium size. Uh, get out there so you can start making negative decisions. Right. What is a negative decision? Okay, well, I, I realize that I like the closed campuses rather than the open campuses. Yeah. I which, will not do this. I yeah. won't go there. Uh-huh, exactly. Yeah. So. Well, good. Um, so you've, you've come up with a short list. Do you have like five favorite schools? Yeah, I do. Do you want me to list sure, those off? Yeah. yeah. So um, Georgetown is my number one because um, it's in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. um, I actually went there. Um, again, for a leadership program, and I love the city. And um, like I said, it's a Jesuit school, and it's a medium-sized school, so mm -hmm. a lot of characteristics that um, I found. Uh, Holy Cross in Massachusetts, um, closer to home. My uncle lives in Massachusetts. Good. And uh, it kind of fits the same characteristic. And Tufts in Boston. Good. So those are my top three. So I presume you started with some criteria, things that I like one, two, three, and four, and then you find the schools that sort of fit those? That sort of fit those, yeah. And I. You, you do the checkoff list mm -hmm. of like, you know, they have this. Another thing um, that's really important for me is diversity. Mm -hmm. um, just because I, I, I know it's been a big culture um, in Pebble Beach, um, you know, there's not that great diversity. But I it's think. It's not um, like Chicago. And it's not like, and exactly, it's not like Chicago. So I want to find something more city like, yeah. I think. So. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what your criteria are. It matters that you decide and you be in the driver's seat. You own this process. Right. Now, have you taken advantage of like going to college fairs or meeting with college reps? Yeah, I did. Um, I went to the college fair here in Carmel. Mm -hmm. And that's um, coming up November 4th. And that's coming up, yeah, in the next month. So it's very helpful just because you get to meet a lot, the representatives. So, you know, talk to them. And if you're really interested to the school, like Holy Cross, um, the representative came and I actually got an interview. Week, right? Yeah, and I mm -hmm. got an interview with them. So. It was one of those things that you never know. If you make a good impression, you know, exactly. you can go far with it. Yeah, so. good. good. And that's helped you. Yeah, and Absolutely. you get a lot of the pamphlets. And, you know, yeah. even if, you know, all the pictures. But there's a lot of good um, side notes in those pamphlets. That okay, let's, let's move towards the real nitty-gritty here. Yeah. You're in the midst of, the, uh, of your application. That's right. Name yeah. a couple of things that are maybe stumbling blocks for you, a little, little tough to deal with. Uh, yeah, the, I think the essays are going to be the hardest part. So what I've done already is I've gone to the websites and I, I've writ, written a list of because there's going to be all sorts of topics that you're going to have to write your essays about right. and so I just look at them every morning so I start building up ideas mm -hmm. throughout the day because it's so hard to sit, just sit down one day and hopefully prop up a good essay so you have to spend a lot of time um, overviewing Good. I might I might come back to you and ask you to come with me on my uh, my personal essay oh. presentation <laughs> here. Okay, let's move to our PowerPoint and, and deal with two things here. Uh, what do I do now and then the actual application itself? What are some specific things that can help me through that process? Okay, in terms of what every senior should be thinking about and doing right now, and if you're not at this point, you're a little bit late, you need to be meeting with your counselor, you need to refine your college list, you need to talk to two teachers and line up a, a teacher recommendation, if you can, when the college representatives come to your school, sign up and go to meet them. If they don't come to your school, they're at uh, Monterey High School or Carmel High School or the Bay Area, go out and see them. Uh, work on your essay, and that's what you're just struggling with right now. Yeah, and it's more right. than one essay. You're going to have to do a couple. Oh, you're going to do a few, yeah. Um, attend the college fairs, and there's no excuse for you know, getting across the street and going over to Carmel. <laughs> you can see that. There'll be about yeah. 60 people there. And then you've got to get the applications. And, and have you got some yet? Um, some, yeah, that's right. I'm going through two applications right now. So probably the so Common App? The, and the Common App is, I just went through the Common App yesterday, mm -hmm. and I highlighted the schools that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. And it's so helpful because it's, you know, it's one application for a lot of schools that um, you can do at once. A lot of schools, mainly private schools. I think mainly there might be two schools. public schools. Yeah. And I think the list is up to 250, maybe 300 two, oh, schools. Oh, yeah, it's like three, four yeah. pages long. So. so that's very helpful. We'll yeah. get to that in a second. Okay, meeting with your counselor. Who's your counselor? Uh, you are. That would be Mr. more. <laughs> <laughs> and we know each other pretty well. Yes, of right? course. You're not afraid of me. No, not at all. And uh, I don't bite. <laughs> uh, so you have to get to that point where, like, I got to know uh, Julia a few years ago when uh, yeah. I was attracted to her. She did a little presentation on your uh, quinceañera. Oh, you quinceañera. Quinceañera, yeah. yeah. That's and right. I learned a lot about her. And yeah. 
then she met me on the trip, and uh, so we worked together. And we're pretty, pretty uh, comfortable. Yeah. But so you need to get to that point with your counselor and with some teachers, and. Ideally, uh, if you're a junior, you need to start January, late spring, and then as a senior, obviously, if you still haven't met your counselor by the fall, you're a little bit behind uh, things. So, yeah. uh, obviously, uh, Julie's been doing this alone without her family because we're not going to meet in Chicago, but ideally, if you can come in with your family and have a meeting with the counselor, a uh, variety of materials that uh, Julia alluded to that you have to prepare and get ready. Uh, and the basic thing is you've got to own the whole process. What do I mean by that? Um, I think as far as owning the process is just feel like you you are you you are doing it for yourself rather yeah. than colleges yeah. don't want to hear from me exactly um, I went to school already I'm not going again mm -hmm. um, I'm not interested in Holy Cross you are yeah. right but my job is to let you know all about Holy Cross mm -hmm. and all these ins and outs and I'm sort of like the guide on the side over here um, so you've got to own it all not your parents okay refining your college list and we'll do a great deal in uh, depth a little bit later but basically there are a variety of college search engines that you can use uh, one is on a thing we have called uh, the family connection with Naviance there are free ones at the college board uh, the Princeton Review site, the Kaplan site, and you used... Uh, yeah, I've, those, right? I've used Princeton before the Naviance, and the Naviance is very helpful. And that's probably the best one. I like that Princeton Review. Yeah, the thing. Princeton Review. Yeah. Okay, and then you have to come up a, with a list of three dream or reach schools. Those are schools where you'd be a little surprised if you get in. You maybe have a one out of five, one out of four chance to be accepted. Uh, for some people, that's a school like an Ivy that'll accept maybe 10%. Uh, for some other people, a dream school might be Santa Clara, which accepts, you know, 35% or so. For other people, it might be a, a Cal State, you know, just uh, yeah. intended for the average student in school, but they haven't never thought about going to college. Uh, and you've got your three dream schools? Yeah, I yeah, do. Yeah, what's one that's of them? That's right. Um, Georgetown. Georgetown. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a dream school for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next, you have to pick out three target or fit schools. Uh, that means you'll be sort of surprised if you don't get in, but you'll get rejected by some, you'll get into some. Right. So probably 50-50 chance. And these are schools that match you as a leader, uh, they match your scores, they match your athletics, you're going to feel very comfortable there. You know, mm -hmm. There'll be some people a little hotter than you, a couple of people will be a little duller than you, but basically yeah. it's your sort of place. And then lastly, you need to have three safety schools. Now the danger is, if you figure they're a safety school, well, I don't want to go there. Uh, that's a big mistake. You have yeah. to find three schools that you can be excited about, but you will be the top dog there. You've got like almost 100% chance of being accepted. Right. Uh, it's, a, it's a safety fit in terms of money also. Like if what happens to my family, I've got to pay on my own. You have to have a safety financial school. But you have to have a school that if you're stuck with your safety school, you're still excited about it. You look right. forward to it. And it's, now that's the, that's the $64 question in my business and the hard thing for me to deal with families and kids to get them excited about finding those schools yes. that are really safety fit schools. but. Because they're not reaches, some kids have a hard time with them. And do you have one of those? I do. It's at UIC okay. um, in Chicago. Okay. And the reason why, at first, I wasn't, I, w I felt the same way. I was yeah. just like, oh, I don't want to end up, you know, going back to a safety. But I went on a tour there, mm -hmm. and they have a great honors program. Right. And they have an, an actually like a pre-law program where you go three years um, as an undergraduate and then three years as a graduate student. So I, you know, since I'm going, I want to be in the field of law. I think that'll be sure. a great. So this is the University of Illinois at Chicago, at Chicago. in your backyard. Yeah, that's so right. So you have a, for sure a great place that you can go to. Mm -hmm. OK, your assignment tonight for everybody, you got to find that school for yourself. OK, getting recommendations. Uh, just quickly here, you need to find two teachers, one from your junior year, if possible, one from a senior year, but certainly not the sophomore or freshman year. You need to have people that know you and are able to shine a spotlight on you in the classroom. You know, what have, what have you done there? How have you affected the class? Uh, and usually, somebody from the humanities side and then somebody from the math science side, because uh, they want to see the different sides of your brain and different perspectives. Uh, you can also get a non-classroom recommendation. This might be a coach. This might be a mentor, an advisor. We have an advisory system at school. Could be your minister, uh, somebody in the community. Could be somebody you work for in a job, somebody from your summer. Uh, you need to provide them with a resume, offer to spend time with an interview, and help them write it. In fact, I'm going to have my workshop this Thursday, and you better be there, <laughs> uh, about how you get a good recommendation. I'll have all these tips and some handouts. And um, you know, actually, former students of mine who did a really good job helping me to write their, uh, their recommendations. So there's a lot of keys, a lot of interesting things here. And we'll do this for, um, for KMST and College Prep for You in December. Uh, the last thing, uh, you need to give me stamped, self-addressed envelope with the dates when everything is due. This is sort of just basic logistics so that we um, mm -hmm. take care of business. Okay, meeting college reps. Uh, you met one today. A lot of things you have to do. 
try to go in and see the different types of colleges, a big school, little school, uh, liberal arts, engineering, and so forth. Get permission from your teacher, just don't dodge out of class. Uh, do a little research beforehand, like you saw who today? Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt. Did you look up a little bit about Vanderbilt? I did last night, and that was uh, that was all that I got yeah, before. So you're a little so, more yeah. conversant, a little more articulate. Mm -hmm. uh, bring some questions. What's one question you asked today? Um, I asked them about their leadership program, and it's actually they have this new program there for freshmen, mm -hmm. so it was good. Good, right yeah, up your alley. It's a good thing to know. Uh, and then a little follow-up note. You haven't done that yet, but you need to do that. Just mm -hmm. a little thank you note, get the person's name, get their uh, business card. It just shows a lot of class and it'll work for you. Now, attending the college fair. You went last year at Carmel. It'll be there again this year. Yep. If you haven't done so, it's an easy one. It's about 6.30 or 7 o'clock till 8 at night. Uh, if you're in the Bay Area, you can go up to Santa Clara. Uh, a lot of places all over. In fact, in, in the more densely populated areas, they have a lot more of them. Yeah. Uh, what can you do? Pick up materials, get the glossies, talk to people, ask questions. Yeah. Uh, you're on a fact-finding mission. Make contacts. Remember, it's all about networking, getting to know people, and then follow up again with communication. Hey, I was at your school. I saw you at the fair. I'm applying there. You give me a little thank you note. All of a sudden, you've made contact five or six different times. That's you think right. they're going to know you? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. And so uh, online, like if I, Georgetown, for instance, if I applied, like, as a login name, and so they'll email you when they're in your area, which is really nice. And they so usually come to the Bay Area. Yeah, once they, they were done the on fairs, the peninsula. Yeah, and Lehigh had just Lehigh, Lehigh emailed me before they were coming, which is really helpful. And you saw so, both places and, last yeah, year. Yeah, and I did. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Okay, the next thing is what you're doing right now is getting applications. Uh, where do you get them? You get them online. Okay. Uh, you can get paper applications. You can send for them. Uh, when you get them, you've got to cannibalize them. Now, what does that mean? Uh, you tear them apart. In fact, I've got uh, the common application right here, and it'll come into three parts. Virtually every application has got the first year application. That's what you fill out. That's right. Spend a lot of time, do a really good job with that, and I have a workshop on that. What you give to me is a secondary school report, mm -hmm. and you fill that out, and you give me the st stamped address envelope for all of these, and then you give these teacher evaluations to yeah. the teachers. And I'll have these in detail a little bit later uh, on in the year. So you break these into the three parts. Uh, offer to spend time with people. You fill out your application. You do a super job on it. And then you follow up and verify that I did my job. You know how you can do that? How? You can drop by my office. Hey, Mr. Email. Miller, <laughs> email me. Did you do it yet? Yeah. Like, especially a couple of weeks before it's due, you know, knock on somebody's door, rattle their chain, bring them some coffee, <laughs> something like that. All right? And do yeah. the same thing with, uh, with teachers. Okay, the documents that you need. This is what we were talking about a little bit before. This is what you did last spring. And every school has got some version of this. And if they don't, that shouldn't keep you from doing it yourself. You make an initial planning form, you and your parents, like the one's called the parents response form, it's a little bit longer, where you basically write out all of the things that you're going to do, that you need to do, your, your parameters, things you won't do, what you're interested in, where you want to be, mm -hmm. what you want to pay, all of those, all those deals. Uh, and then you perform a college search. We mentioned that. Uh, you take a personality test. You do a learning inventory. You create a resume. Uh, and then what we do with our seniors is a senior update form. And that simply tells us what Julia did over the summer, summer. how she changed her mind, uh, what her new list looks like. Yeah. And uh, we, we go on from there. OK, have we forgotten anything about right now? Right now. Yeah, what we're doing right now as seniors. Anything we need to tell them about? Scholarships. Now, that's a little bit later. later. You get into school first, worry about those scholarships later. Let's see, what's what's next? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna assume that we're we've yeah. got an application. That's right. And we're starting to fill it out, and I'm gonna help you do a really good job filling it out. So this is called creating your best application. Okay, this application format. It's standard and printed, just like I held up here, and almost nobody's using paper anymore, the snail mail. Online. Everything's electronic, everything's online. Uh, you can download these things, uh, print them off, uh, and then even send them back. Now, the, di the, the difficulty is you need to prove that you did it. Um, okay, a couple of things to consider. Uh, the cost, uh, you're going to do how many applications? I'm going to do 9 or 10. 9 or 10. Nine and that can 10. be fairly costly, about 50, 60 bucks for each one. For each so you're, one, You're right. getting into the hundreds of dollars. Some people yeah. have 20 or 30, and that's thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. So think about the cost. Uh, Think about the overlap, like this common application, you're going to use it for how many? 
I'm going to hopefully five. Five or so, six. Yeah. But if you do the UC, that's a single one. If you do Michigan, that's a single, single one. Single one, yeah. Uh, but more and more people are doing these uh, uh, common applications. How easy is it to fill out? Chicago is a really tough one to fill out. The Cal State one is pretty easy. Mm -hmm. How about Illinois? I'm guessing it's a little more easier. Than, Illinois is really, yeah, yeah it's yeah. really easy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how readable it's going to be? Like, like if you're a nice, neat writer, if you can type, if you can do it online, uh, because you don't want to destroy things and pull the rug out if it's not readable. And another thing you need is uh, an Adobe uh, Acrobat reader if you don't have that. Okay. This common application. We already talked about it has about 300 members. Mm -hmm. uh, you can you know, get paper copies, you can download, it's pretty easy. It's got huge advantages. Everybody accepts it. There's no bias or stigma attached to it. Right. Uh, the disadvantages are it's not quite as personable. Uh, you know, it doesn't have quite as specific uh, places for answers uh, as, as some schools that have their own uh, ones, but it's a pretty, pretty good document. My advice in the past has always been if you have one favorite school, and I still think that I believe this, like for example, if you want to go to Chicago, mm -hmm. even if Chicago is on the common application, I would fill out Chicago's own personal application. Because you're telling Chicago, you matter to me. Right. I would take a little bit of extra time and do that. That makes sense. Most people yeah. would probably disagree with that, but anything that can give you an edge, I would go that route. Okay, completing uh, some of these forms. What you want to do is keep a pristine original copy and don't mess it up with, with practice. Get two copies, make a copy of one uh, and practice and play with, with uh, the original. Uh, after you've done uh, 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 an application, make copies of it so you can prove it. You don't mm -hmm. want to send off the original and have nothing to prove it. Um, use your resume okay. to copy uh, the information, to copy it from one side to the other so you won't forget things. And this is where your parents can help uh, remember. Help now, is a resume supposed to one page, keep it to one well, page? Well, no, a resume, yeah, to get a job, but the resume you're going to use is very so thorough, it's complete, it's long, it's, uh, it's, it serves a lot of functions. Yeah. Uh, make sure that you're following directions. Uh, if they ask for a certain thing, deliver that certain thing. Don't yeah. go off on a tangent and do what you want to do. Uh, obviously, you never use a pencil. You, you always type or do it online. Mm -hmm. If you do use a pen, you know, blue or black, Bad. and I would never do it with my handwriting because it's awful. Uh, if you have really nice, attractive handwriting, you might want to take a chance, but uh, remember this is all, all about presentation here. Right. Uh, neatness obviously counts. And also, this is for our international students, consistency of names, even in not international, everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if you use a slightly different name or if you use an initial or you change one number, you're going to come up with two different files, files, either with your tests or with the application itself. And I guarantee you there are more than one Julia Ramirez applying <laughs> to the school that you're applying to. Yeah. So be very consistent with your names. Now, this is a touchy issue. Have you had schools that have asked you for a photograph? I haven't, no. What I would you do that. if they did? I mean, I, I applied for the Quest Bridge mm -hmm. and they asked for a photo and I didn't post one. So you didn't? I didn't. You did? Okay. I, yeah. You did not? I did not. Okay. Because I didn't, I didn't know which picture to choose and I wasn't sure if that was the right Well, that's, to that's take, a conversation so. each family is going to have to have and yeah. you're individually going to have to decide. I have sort of a bias against it because I think their alternative motive, motive is to find if you're male or female mm -hmm. or which group you're with or, you know, they're finding things that really are maybe not have, that doesn't have to do with who you are as a person. Right. And I understand their, mo their, goal, their motivation and goal. I just have some problems with it. Yeah. So that's one you're going to have to figure out for yourself. Okay. A couple of other ideas here. Try to make it really nice, but avoid the professional look. Like you don't want to show that or imply that your parents paid the high-powered, high high-salaried person to do this. It's got to be your work because right. the admissions offices can ferret this out in a second. They mm -hmm. can tell where you haven't done it and somebody else has done it. Okay, self-representation, that means everything about your application has to scream out Julia Ramirez, Chicago, Hispanic female, leader, charger, been to, mm -hmm. all of these fantastic experiences, and it all comes together. Your teacher talks about it, you talk about it, your essay says something, I reinforce it. So the person reading knows everything that we want them to know about you. Mm -hmm. uh, you could be a gentleman jock, you could be a, a stage techie. Whatever you are, it's got to be screaming out over the application. It's got to have consistency and cohesion. Uh, undecided is major, we talked about this on the way over. That's right. Good idea or not? Yes. It is. It is. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Nobody I, I holds. Was, I was stressing out about it, I think, yeah. more than I should because, I mean, I've heard a lot that you're going to change your major in college. Yeah. Most and it likely. really doesn't matter what you study. They know 70% of know. the people are undecided. So it yes. really doesn't matter. Now, a little caveat to that, um, and, and I'll, I'll come back to this in a second, the reading uh, and following directions. 
if you want to use a strategy and you find out that you're mildly in interested in geology, for example, and your school doesn't have many geology majors, that might be a little ticket to get in the back door. Mm -hmm. But it's a strategy and it's a little disingenuous, so you have to think that through. Okay, you're reading and following instructions. Give them exactly what they want. Now, when you make your list of important things you've done, you put the most important, important thing first, yes. where you've spent the most time, the thing that really defines you. For you, that would be what? That would be student council. Yeah, leadership, all That's those right, things. yeah. And down the list might be sports. And, and common app, like the Common App has that. Yeah. It has the list of, I believe, five. So, yeah. and, and, um, so make sure that you are very efficient doing that. Uh, and you also want to spend, specify how much time you've spent. You know, right. how many weeks, how many hours. Uh, to make it real quality yeah. so that they can separate you from somebody who just dabbles with mm -hmm. it. Uh, key, another thing to keep in mind is sympathize with your audience. And your audience is going to be some 20-something year old fresh out of college kid who's overworked and underpaid and they're maybe a little bit bored and you've got to keep their interest and you've got to make them your advocate. Mm -hmm. So get on their side, try to ingratiate yourself, try to keep them awake, right. uh, make them be uh, <laughs> working for you. Okay, a couple other things, a um, little advice here. Um, Okay, special needs. If you are a different student, if you've got little learning differences or physical differences, whatever, don't be hesitant to share with your school that you need to have that accommodated and that taken yes. care of. Uh, in the past, people are a little iffy about that, but mm -hmm. I don't think you need to be anymore. If you're one of these students who comes on really late and you're doing really well, even the fall of your senior year, then you come into the late bloomer uh, category. And a lot of private schools, smaller schools, uh, schools that pay very close attention to your application well, figure that out, and that will help you. They like to see a good, strong charge late in the year. Mm -hmm. So you know some kids like that at Stevenson. Yes, definitely. That's not you. Yeah. Uh, and so that can sort of work to their favor if they find the right school, Right. Uh, this late bloomer appeal. Um, there's an option in many of these places for you to tell something about us. Never, ever, 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 ever avoid filling up that space. There are no options, there are no empty spaces in our applications. Yes. So what would you, if you got an extra page, what would you slip in there? Uh, I think I would, I, I would definitely mention my high school scholarship that I received. Okay, good. Yeah, Something was, maybe you don't have normal space for, but it still it, matters but if you can still fit it in. Again, fit that in, yeah. Good. Uh, University of Pennsylvania and some other schools have a section called Tell Why You Want Us. Uh, some free advice mm -hmm. here, make sure you know about the school. Make sure you know uh, that they have what you're going to talk about. Uh, don't blow smoke at them because obviously they know what's going on. Yes. Try to be a little intricate, a little detailed, a little esoteric. Let them know that you know important things about them. And don't, don't be too general. Don't be too broad with that. Right. Okay, now here's another toughie, the box marked, marked race. race. Yeah, we, I've okay. had a discussion with that. Yeah, it's good and it's bad. Uh, yeah. Why is it good? Well, it, it's hard for a lot of the, the people at Stevenson because they are Caucasian. And yeah. I've had a conversation with one of my good friends and she's like, I do not like that box. And I must say that I like that box. So. Sure, it doesn't help her, but it can but help it, you. It can help me, yeah. exactly. Why, why are colleges interested in this? I think it's it's the whole diversity factor, them trying to bring in um, different type of students and... So what does that matter? Why do they want diversity? Economic Well, that's standards. the type, but economic, yes. you know, females, males, right. uh, different cultural groups, ethnic groups. Why do they want that? Mm -hmm. Because... Like how, how, how I'm going to be a co college freshman next year. Mm -hmm. Why am I going to profit from that? Well, I believe, well, it's, it's all the... Uh, the opportunity and how much they're going to bring to the school. Okay, what are they, they going to bring to the school? The, the minority students? Yeah. Or minority or just people or who are different. Any, and different. Like I come from Pennsylvania, I go to school in California, I'm different. What am I going to bring? You bring different charge to the school yeah. that other students do. You don't know do. what people are like in Pennsylvania or <laughs> yeah. South Dakota. So, you know, there's a great a, a warranted push for this and it's, it's an important thing. You want to go to an interesting place and you want to be around interesting people. So, you have to decide, do I want to play that card? Do I want to play the athlete card, the legacy card, yeah. the gender card? Um, I think that, you know, really competitive places, you've got to make that decision and do what works and what is best for you, mm -hmm. knowing full well what, what colleges want. Okay, there's also a thing that you have to do, I'm giving my real strong, firm advice. There's a confidential disclosure signature, which means you will not look at my estimation of you. You're not going to read what I say about you. Right. And you need to sign that, and the reason you do is if you don't, they won't take my word quite as seriously. Mm -hmm. So it's in your best interest to do that. 
I have a standing offer. I, I give my letter to any student who wants it at the end of the at year. At the end of the year, yeah. You and you come and get email. it, and I'll give it to you. And then you can use it later for things. Right. Because we say pretty honest, positive things. We want you to be successful. <laughs> you know, and that's true with your teachers and your yeah. counselors. So sign it and then uh, look at it later. Now, um, there's another thing you have to sign. If you go early, an early action or early decision, you've got to commit that you're actually, if you get in the school under ED, you're going to go there. I have to sign it. You have to sign it. It's an ethical thing. Sealed. And, yeah. And you can't vary it. You have to do mm -hmm. it. Now, we talked about this on the way over, designating majors. Undeclared is fine. 70% of the people do it. What you don't want to put down is pre-law, pre-med, helping people. All these things are sort of phony, they're disingenuous, and they're not real. I mean, there's no pre-law major. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's got a pre-law, pre-med focus, and you can, no matter where you go, you can become, prepare to become a doctor or a, a lawyer or, you know, biz school, but there's not, there's not a major in it. So mm -hmm. you'd look sort of foolish by saying that. Helping people, of course, everybody wants to help people, yeah. and that's sort of a condescending thing to say, so it might be wise to, to avoid that. Uh, I think where you can get an advantage, again, knowing your audience, knowing these young 28-year-olds who are reading this, uh, they like to see liberal, open, tolerant, do-gooder people. And mm -hmm. who does good? Teachers, Jeez. nurses, social workers, ministers. So if you really want to be one of those type of people, it can work to your uh, advantage. Uh, I think another advantage, as I talked about, is a low-interest major. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people aren't uh, clamoring to become Latin uh, majors here. Uh, but also make sure that you have your major. Uh, a student of mine went to uh, Stanford a couple years ago. In fact, he was a recruited athlete. He's on major TV locally here, and he says, I'm going to go to Stanford, I'm going to study architecture. Well, what's the problem with that? They don't have architecture They don't have architecture. Stanford. So he and I and everybody looked sort of foolish. Uh, so you need to know what, uh, what is at the school. Okay, test information. Um, there are spots on the application for you to put down what your SAT scores are, the ACT with writing, the SAT2, the TOEFL, that's the... Uh, the test of English as a foreign language. So you need to be conversant with that. You need to know yeah. how to put those on. Sometimes they will take those on the transcript unofficially. Most of the time, it's your job to send them to the schools. Right. Okay? Yeah. Uh, and untimed testing, that used to be an issue. Uh, now nobody knows if your standardized testing is untimed or not, so it's a confidential issue, no problem. Mm -hmm. uh, if you need that extra time, you should take advantage of it and use it. Right. Um, <clears throat> okay, quality versus quantity, key item here. Um, Schools don't like big laundry lists. I've done this, that, the other thing. I've done 20 different things, because all that means is you haven't done anything well. Mm -hmm. You've got maybe two or three big, big things, things that are quality. That's right. And you're going you're gonna to be able to substantiate things. So you want to avoid, even as a freshman, all this serial joining. Yeah. You can do this through the sophomore year. After that, you want to squeeze it down, take charge, run with the ball, be somebody like like and they Julia. also want to see that you start off as like a regular, you know, and then you come up to vice president, president, exactly. and build up into one thing. I mean, we need, we, need, uh, we need a lot of Indians, but we also need chiefs. Yeah. And by the time you're a senior, you should be a chief of something. Mm -hmm. You should leave a legacy. It should matter that you are at the school, and clearly you're probably the <laughs> poster child for that. Uh, you've made a good use of four years. Now, if you have some very strange award, like our Rickless Scholar Award, or the Robertson yeah. Award, or Firestone Award, they don't know what that is. So don't just list it. You need to list it and explain it. Take the guesswork out. Uh, if you've done group-related activities, that's fine. Um, you can get credit for that. That's just as important as doing individual things, but you have to specify that, mm -hmm. elucidate, um, give, some, give some breadth and depth. By that we mean explain how long you did it, how well you did it, what it has meant to your life, how you've changed. That's what, that's what they want to see, how you were a different person for having done these things. That's what depth and scope means. Uh, the bottom line, they want to see a commitment of a long period of time, several years. A great example would be somebody who's this Olympic caliber gymnast, and they've started in second Ten grade, grade yes. and they just haven't gone away from it. Uh, they also want to see that you're going to last. You're going to keep on doing some things, maybe only one or two things, but you're going to do it in our college community. Uh, you're maybe going to be a leader at the next level, and you won't be able to do all these other things you do, but they want to know that you've proven you can last through the spring of your senior year. And then another thing they like is uh, showing this focus, and you focused on you know, a couple of things. In college, maybe you only get to do one or two things. Okay, activities. Uh, leadership, doesn't matter which one you've done. Julia's done leadership, has done, not done music. Um, guitar this Little guitar? year. Good. Yeah, so okay. kind of fill that in. <laughs> uh, but if music is your big thing, but, obviously right. you can't do everything. Uh, the yeah. arts, some kids focus just on the arts. On service, this could be at your church, it could be at CHOMP, mm -hmm. it could be National, National Charity League, doesn't matter. Uh, if you're a big deal in your church, you know, that counts just as much as working yes. at McDonald's or being a varsity athlete. Uh, the literary magazine, the yearbook, 
uh, the Tusatel, our, our newspaper that came out today. All those things are important, and it doesn't matter. Now, something like environmental efforts, you spend all of your time clearing trails, or you go in the wilderness program, or you do something outdoors, that's just every bit as legitimate and as important. Yeah. But the thing is, you have to document it. You have to have people write about it, support it. You've got to send them uh, supporting materials. <clears throat> uh, your job, everybody doesn't have the luxury of not working. In fact, the average person probably has a job, and that's okay. Because what do you demonstrate? Reliability, yeah. Yeah. integrity, responsibility, and that's what you're demonstrating in all of these other activities. So or don't internships, be internships, right? Internships, that's also, all yeah. of this. Have you done one? I did one this summer. That's it, right. Yeah, for three months, um, I worked at uh, in a law firm uh, with some attorneys, fantastic. and yeah. And so you've got somebody who can can uh, write for you, write and for me, substantiate all that. Exactly. Okay. Another another aspect you have to be aware of: short answer questions. Uh, treat these seriously. Don't shine them on just because they're brief. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one or two or three answers. Um, I know Stanford's got one uh, brief little thing. Tell us about, uh, or write a letter, or a little note to your uh, future roommate. Another one is, what should someone know about you? Mm -hmm. So spend as much time on those, take those seriously, and uh, everything And I'm sure there's word limits also. Yeah, there are so, word limits. Yeah. So you have to treat them like poetry. Exactly. You know, every little word is, is serious. Mm -hmm. Write rough drafts, have somebody look them over. Uh, and all of these things work together to, to create this holistic look about you, and they provide insight on the applicant. Um, okay, a couple of supplementary materials. And this doesn't apply to everyone, um, and, and so you have to be very circumspect about this. But in these categories, drama, athletics, literary, uh, artistic, and dance, you get in as much on your academics as you do um, uh, on your transcript and standard test score. Um, you know, that's one part of it. The other part, and it might even be a more important part for some schools, are these things. Uh, certainly athletics is a, is a, a key is a example big, of that. Yeah, exactly. Some schools like, like USC and NYU, drama can be your ticket to those places. Right. So you've got to prove, just like you do academically, you've got to prove that you're worthy. That means you need to send to them certain things. Um, Sometimes you might have to go back and perform a dance. You might have to sing in an audition. Right. Uh, some places you have to send a portfolio of your, of your, your pictures, your drawings, your paintings, your photography. Uh, athletes send back tapes of their tapes, games. Tapes, yeah. So this can be very complicated. It takes a little bit of sophistication. Um, and th th there's, you, know, you don't send everything. There are certain ways you go about it. So uh, you need some help on this. A couple of cautions, things to be aware of. Um, you don't send everything to the admissions office. Like, you don't send athletic tapes there. You don't audition with them. They're not singers. They're not coaches. You need to send those to the specific departments through the admissions office. Yeah. Uh, you need to clue them in, but uh, academic or athletic tapes need to go to the coaches, but you have to have everybody on the same page. Uh, if you're going to send things back, especially important things, uh, things important to your family, a one-only item, label them, identify them, maybe insure them, but be very, very careful uh, as you do that. Be, be very circumspect, uh, be limited, be cautious about all this. Obviously, you don't want to send the original of something that's valuable and can't be replaced. Right, yeah. Now, this is, this is difficult, service. Proving the service that you've done. That's a, that's a really touchy matter, something that might be a little difficult. Uh, religious matters, now, things that you do, who you are as a religious person, it's hard to quantify that. It's hard to get your arms around that and, and project that to someone. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure I have any real answers for that. Yeah, that, it, one's a that it's, was it's a tough, a tough one. Yeah, uh, you're, a, you're a very spiritual, too. religious person, and it's a big part of your life. How do you convey that, other than the fact you've applied to Holy Cross and yeah. sat there in these places? Um, um, well, I mean, another thing is we have the chapel there at school, and I try to go very mm -hmm. frequent on Sunday, so maybe get a recommendation in. Yeah, through fr and Frank Stevenson goes to the chapel lots. So you could uh, uh, Yeah, Dr. Rowland, you know, exactly. your pastor. Uh, and then the last thing, the literary thing, that that's, can be pretty easy to document. Like we've got a student now who's uh, doing, in fact, Laura McCoy is doing uh, sports write-ups and she works oh, for the Herald. Yeah. Uh, we've had Herald. kids who've interned at, at uh, Channel 8 with Dennis Lennon. And mm -hmm. so you can verify uh, those sorts of things. Uh, environmental efforts, that could be a little tough uh, yeah. unless you, you're working with like a... a certain organization maybe. Yeah, certain or, groups, yeah. yeah. But, but all these things are legitimate and you have to take care of them. Now, uh, as we come to a close here, um, couple last little pieces of advice. Gimmicks. I've seen lots of gimmicks through the years. Some of them are funny, but basically they don't do anything for you uh -huh. except elicit some laugh or some response uh, from the admissions people. What would be an example? Well, sending a box of cookies. Uh, <laughs> First of all, they'll eat the cookies and talk about you behind your back <laughs> while they're enjoying the cookies, and then that won't help you one bit. Oh, I've, I've seen a, a student, I've heard a student who sent one tennis shoe with the note saying, 
this other tennis shoe is going to drop when you accept me at your school. Something sort of silly, oh like superficial like that. Well, they yeah. don't care about it. You've, you're just out of pair of tennis shoes. Yeah. Uh, I know of a case where somebody hired a band to march up and down in front of Stanford's admissions office, making a fool of themselves. And, and he had some sort of sign or, or sandwich board saying, uh, please admit so-and-so. Oh, well, the kid no. didn't get in, and they had a good laugh, and it was distracting. But the kid now is the butt of jokes, and yeah. there's a good example of what not to do. So these things are not good. Avoid them. Uh, they don't help you. They clutter up the whole process. OK, the last thing you can do, double check um, your application. Look at it. Have a third party reader. Uh, recheck all the directions. Make sure that nothing's missing, that nothing falls out of the envelope. Print out a hard copy, especially if it's electronic. Prove that you sent it. Right. Uh, and I had a student years ago who had 20 some applications. 18 of them were stolen over the PG oh, mailboxes no. are us by this lady who was opening the checks and taking them out. And he didn't have, didn't have proof for these things that he'd done. So right. uh, that was probably one of the ugliest examples of, of not having backup proof. So you're making copies of, yeah, of everything. Yeah, definitely try to um, make sure that you're staying intact with all the dates and make sure you're sending them in on time. Yeah, and there's and a spreadsheet we give for that so you can follow, follow just to along. cover the bases just to know that you're, you're doing everything you need to. And here's a little key bit of advice. If you're going snail mail, like if you're sending hard copies of things, get a certificate of mailing. I think it costs about a dollar, but it proves to them, I sent you this document. And they're, gonna, they're not going to question what the document is. They know that you're, you've got a copy of it. And they will allow you then to send it past the date, the January oh. 1st date. So back yourself up with that uh, proof of mailing. And obviously, be on time. And I'm probably the worst example of that. <laughs> I applied to my three colleges on January 3rd, and they were supposed to be on January 1st. But oh, wow. obviously, I went to college. <laughs> it wasn't the end of the world, but you don't want to yeah. do that. Okay, uh, we've talked about a lot of things. Uh, we want to wish you a great deal of luck. Uh, any last parting words that you can uh, share with our audience? Uh, I just hope that this was definitely um, something worthwhile for them for the, the hour, and I hope people go to their college counselor right away. So. Yeah, and, and try to maybe look back over this when you can yeah. see it on YouTube or if it circulates and you get a little button to go to it. Look at this again. We gave you lots of information, but uh, go back and, and uh, try to ferret some of this out. Two real quick things. There's a new, new thing on the Internet called University, and I've got the, uh, the, uh, the source right here, if you can remember that and, uh, and dial that into your computer. What it is, it's about 20 to, I guess they have about 100 now, live sites where you can go onto a college campus and uh, see what it's really like. It's a vicarious experience. And uh, try it out tonight. Pick your yeah. favorite campus and go You're going to do Vanderbilt because they haven't been there. So. <laughs> OK, I think we're, uh, we're about at the end of another hour. I told you it was going to go pretty fast. That was really it? fast. Um, OK, <laughs> as we come to a close, I wanted to thank uh, Julia for being here and giving, providing her expertise and her friendship and her support. And I wanted to thank our parents and our students for uh, joining us this year. I hope, look forward to uh, being with you every couple of weeks with a variety of, I hope, interesting and different uh, helpful hints. Uh, thank, we thank the students, we thank the parents, and uh, all the people who helped put this on. Uh, in two weeks, join us. I think it's the 27th at 4.30. We'll be live again. Uh, we're going to deal with uh, the, the, the state college system in, in California, the UC system, the Cal State system. I will have a lady here from, uh, who is a point guard, a basketball player from UC San Diego. She helps us out at school with a variety of things, some testing. And she will have lots of inf interesting first-hand information uh, about the UC system and also some personal information from herself. Okay, thanks for being with us. Uh, I think I'll close with our mantra that I tried out last year. Remember that it's never too early to start looking at this process, and it's never too late to get started on it. Uh, this is Dave Miller uh, wishing you good luck in your hunt for the right college for you.